All right, we've seen the Gaussian pyramid. It is not the only type of pyramid. There is a Laplacian pyramid, there's a steerable pyramid, there's a wavelet pyramid. Um, and we're gonna talk about one more, which is the Laplacian pyramid. Um, I like this, pyra this pyramid for a couple of reasons. One, it, it really sort of uh, very nicely illustrates why these Fourier representations are useful to have in your head. So let me go ahead and just describe the pyramid. Um, I, I will, we'll look at the Fourier representation of it, and then we'll look at some code for generating this. So this should look familiar. This is the Gaussian pyramid. Um, we've got our high resolution over here, half resolution, half resolution, half resolution. And the way we did that is blur, downsample, blur, downsample, blur, downsample. The Laplacian pyramid is generated in a slightly different way, but starts with the Gaussian pyramid. So what we're gonna do is we're going to build the Gaussian pyramid, the way I've done here. And then we're gonna take this level, we're going to upsample it by back to the original resolution, no blurring obviously because it's already been blurred, so just interpolate the missing pixels and then difference it from the original, okay? What does that mean? Well, let me just show you what it looks like. It's gonna look something like that right there. So that's the difference between this image, which has been blurred and downsampled and then brought back up. So what is it? It's, well, whatever information was lost in that process. And you can see it's all these really high frequency details that were lost when I went down this level of the pyramid. And now I'm gonna repeat the process. I'm gonna take this uh, band, this level here, I'm going to upsample it, subtract it from here, and then that's the next level of the pyramid. And I'm gonna do it again. And then at the very end, we leave this little guy right here because there's nothing to its side to um, upsample. And this is the so-called Laplacian pyramid, okay? And what you're seeing here, and it's not immediately obvious in the space domain, but it's gonna be obvious in the Fourier domain. So let's go ahead and look at the Fourier domain as to what we're representing in each of these uh, levels of the pyramid. So all the way down here at the bottom, it's the same as the Gaussian pyramid. It's this really, really low frequency. This again, of course, is just omega x, omega y in my Fourier representation. So that bottom of the pyramid is exactly the same. Now, what's the next level over here? Well, I don't have that information here. I've, I've lost that because I've differenced it. So what I have is this annulus of information. So I have information that is associated with only a band of frequencies. So I throw away the low frequencies, I've thrown away a lot of the high frequencies, and I've retained just that middle area. And of course, the next level is, well, the next annulus, and the next level is the next annulus. And so what we've done here is we've gone from the full, in the Gaussian pyramid, we had the full representation, and then we just kept shrinking. Here what we've done is we're carving out these annuluses. And why is this useful? Well, it's useful because each of these bands represents a, a subset of the frequencies. And why might you care about that? Well, in some images and some sounds, you want information associated with a particular frequency, something that may be low frequency, something that may be middle frequency, something that may be high frequency. And you may want to manipulate those parts of the image differently because they have different content associated with different pieces of information out in the world. And again, lots of applications for this. Go into Google Scholar, search for Laplacian pyramid. You will see this being done for so-called subband analysis to analyze uh, content at different um, frequencies. Uh, this is very popular in denoising, removing noise from an image because noise manifests itself differently across the spectrum. Um, it's very popular in compression. Um, wavelets, for example, have been very popular in compression and this is a variant of a wavelet transform here which we won't be talking about in this class. And again, I think it's important to, to write the code for this. And these calculations are actually pretty simple. So let's see what that looks like. Load the image again. We have to build the Gaussian pyramid. So I'm gonna have that same filter. This is my low pass blur filter. And now I'm gonna build four levels of a Laplacian pyramid. Here's my loop again for doing that. And so let's see what happens. So this inner loop here is going through each of the color channels again. I'm gonna do my uh, convolution and I'm gonna do my subsampling, and this is my Gaussian level. Okay, so now what I've done is I've computed one level of the Gaussian pyramid, but now what I need to do is go back up, upsample that, and then subtract it from the level above, and then that's my new level. Okay, so here I have my two levels. 
uh, the Gaussian level at k, the Gaussian level at k plus 1 that I just computed in the code that I showed you. And what I'm going to do is take the smaller of the two and resize it, upsample it, and there's just a, 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 a CV2, which is, of course, the OpenCV library that will resize the image by interpolating the missing pixels. I'm going to difference. I'm going to do a little normalization here just so I can display the images on the same scale. Otherwise, it's very hard to see everything. And then I repeat that loop for every level. And then I've got a little visualization here for the pyramid. And when you run that code, you get exactly what you expect. You get the highest frequency only, and then you get the band frequencies, and then you get the low frequencies. So here, this is not so much about computational efficiency. It's not just that this image is smaller. It contains different information than these bands of the pyramid over here. And why you would choose to do this depends on your analysis. Sometimes analysis really only should, or the, you have to either do different analysis in the different bands, or you only care about this information and you don't care about the high frequencies and you don't care about the low frequencies because the signal you're looking for happens to be represented in this particular part of a pyramid. And so these pyramids, and again, I just want to emphasize that the Gaussian pyramid and the Laplacian pyramid are just two of many different types of representations where you are essentially carving up the Fourier space into different chunks and storing images associated with different chunks of the Fourier space and then doing analysis differently depending on those chunks of the Fourier representation. And so this is the first example where we've really seen some of the concepts from before, convolution, Fourier, and sampling come together. And we'll see lots more examples of that coming on in the rest of the semester.